Okay, so we are at the TLA offices, and tonight we have um, screening What's the Name of the Dame? And so I have with us now the director, Alan Newworth. Newworth. Newworth, I'm sorry. Hello. <laughs> and, uh, and the producer, Jack Chan. Um. And so um, I want to start with the whole ABBA aspect, because uh, Ray Murray, that seemed to really grab him. <laughs> and so how did that become a part of the, of the film? Well, as, uh, as everyone knows, it, ABBA is a worldwide phenomenon still today. Uh, not just music from the 70s, but also with the six phenomenal success of Mamma Mia! The Musical, which has been r uh, running in 20, 30, maybe more countries in all sorts of different translations, including Korean. And uh, so who doesn't like ABBA? And uh, I had the opportunity to work with nine very incredible performers who wanted to put their own spin, uh, if you will, on ABBA, and that to me was the most attractive part about this project, was hearing Dancing Queen as a country western. I mean, who would have thought about that? I certainly would have never imagined that. Uh, Super Trooper as a uh, Broadway torch song, or Lay All Your Love on Me as a blues rock ballad torch, it was just yeah. sort of just uh, all, the, all the emotion and passion that Yolanda had to offer. So uh, it, that is the way that the, uh, the performers interpreted ABBA is what really makes the music and uh, the movie stand out. And the movie grew out of the music because it actually started as, a, as a, um, an audio project first. There is a CD called Abolicious. <laughs> and that was what the name, uh, it, was, it was actually a, a kind of a, a, a multimedia project because we had live performances at places in New York City like Therapy and Splash uh, they were on. They were on a morning TV show or two right. as well, performing a song. Fox, Fox on Fox. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what do you know? Rupert Murdoch put some abstract things on singing ABBA, and um, and then um, <clears throat> Jack and I have been friends for a long time, and he knew that I do. I make television shows and films, and I got involved, and it turned. At first, it was going to be a TV special, and then it became a full-length motion picture with full-blown production numbers and interviews with all the uh, performers. Performers, celebrities, celebrities are one way involved with drag or ABBA, and of course, yeah. Benny Anderson of ABBA. I think that was, that was a real feather in our cap. Yeah, yeah, Jack flew me to, uh, to Stockholm, and uh, I stayed in Benny's hotel, which was very nice. And uh, it was the hotel where they premiered the movie, exactly. uh, uh, Mamma Mia. Yeah, ah. and, then, and I spent the day, basically, in his studios with him. Uh, which was quite quite fascinating, right? And we were told also at the time that um, that uh, Benny doesn't give many interviews at all, but that uh, he consented to, and especially not about Abba, because as much as Abba is very dear to his heart, and he knows that it's dear to many people around the world, but he just also felt like that was part of the past, and so he typically doesn't give interviews uh, about Abba, but he thought our project was so interesting. And had heard some of the music. Or, yes, he had. Yeah. So, uh, and that's how we were able to secure an interview. Yeah, it was, the parts that, uh, that Benny's parts in the movie are absolutely fascinating, because he's sort of mystified by the gay community's love of Abba and the drag community is embracing of Abba. But even though it mystifies him, he loves it. <laughs> he doesn't. He doesn't care who loves his music as long as no, someone, someone loves it. Loves it huh? oh, but yeah, and I think that the main point is that Abba is universal. And, that, and that's really ultimately what it comes down to, and he's very happy to have anybody who loves ABBA to love the music. And yeah. we did ask him, though, if he's ever seen a drag queen perform ABBA, and apparently he hasn't yet. Um, Which uh, was there was one, there was one, oh, there was one he was aware of a drag queen oh, in true. Stockholm, but that's true. he hadn't actually gone to yeah. see the perform. So right. has he seen the movie yet? He has not seen the movie yet. Yeah. Ah. It's going to be interesting when he does. Yeah. <laughs> we'll be I know. I love it when projects are organic this way and, and you don't have to have a, a whole plan. You just kind of let it, you know. This whole project was like that. It sort of grew exponentially as we were going along. And we didn't, I mean, we sort of had a plan, but it evolved. It evolved in a major way along as we, as we kept on going. So a lot of the stars who were in it, we didn't even know if we were going to get them. It took on a life of its own. Yeah, Christine Baranski. Because we got Christine Baranski, she suggested Benny, because they're good friends from doing the movie Mamma Mia together. 
And so she just gave me his phone number. You know, <laughs> talk about organic. See, that's, that's what I love about film. That, you know, just that creative process coming together. Yeah. But now, were any of the drag queens, though, troublesome? Were they yeah, divas? Yeah. And <laughs> because that's what you first think of. That behind the scenes, they must be, you must have to coddle them. You know what? I, I didn't find them difficult. They were all very, they are, they're all from the lot. They're all very talented. And when people are, are very talented and confident of, uh, in, in their own talent, um, I guess they could be difficult, but ours were not. And everybody brought something different yeah. to the project. And so it didn't feel as if you had to. Uh, drag queens who were somehow competing for the same kind of audience, or you know, everybody was, everybody had a, their own specialty. Mm -hmm. You know, Yolanda with her uh, Christian blues rock kind of repertoire, yeah. Hedda with her raunchiness, and Edie with her dancing. I mean, every, and Sade, and Darvis with her amazing voice, incredible voice that stays present. Yeah, so everybody was something different, and so I That's think true. that that was also part of what made the project so great. Yeah, but and so no, they. You know what else? When they realized that we knew what we were doing, we weren't just amateurs, uh, they, they had respect for us. So they became very, very eager to, to participate and be their best because we were doing our best too. So I think that helped. It helped with Hedda for sure. <laughs> I know that. I like that. And, and now, is this uh, your first time at QFest? Uh, it's my first time at QFest. Uh, it's it's uh, my first time too. It's our yeah. yeah this is um, it's my first film. This is your first film. This is as, my well. As, you're, you're, as director, 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 uh, director. Yeah, I've worked on film. I've written many films and television shows. Um, and I, I, and I used to in a previous life. I used to do special effects for for films too. Mm. So uh, this would be my first yes, my first film as a director. Yeah, and then we're breaking our QFest cherry. <laughs> well, welcome, and we can't wait until tonight, and thank you for the interview. Thank you. Thank you.